I normally recommend for most clinicians to not make any decision about uh, changing their practice based upon one small randomized controlled trial or some single study. I, I encourage them that if they're looking for the best data, they use what are called meta-analyses or systematic reviews, very, very large studies that eliminate much of the bias that easily pops up in literature. I also suggest that they don't just read the article. They look for their peers. They look to the specialties that the article may reflect, uh, may be related to. And they read uh, publications where um, some of the literature has been read by a specialist and interpreted for you. And there's a number of, of those sorts of things available uh, in the medical literature that you can subscribe to and that you might already subscribe to. If you're a family physician, the American Family Physician has a section called Tips from Other Journals, and that's a good start. There they've taken some, they've reviewed some of the literature, and they've included a few. Uh, the Cochrane Collaboration, which is an international collaboration of clinicians and researchers, publishes Primary Care Pearls, which is a weekly or a monthly email that comes out that says this is the best the best literature that's practice changing that's occurred in the last month. And they primarily look at just systematic reviews and meta-analyses. And then there's a number of ones you can um, subscribe to. Uh, something like ACP Journal Club or Journal Watch. Journal Watch is one of my favorites. And there's uh, info poems and a host of others. I have a few guiding thoughts. One is be relatively conservative. Don't jump on some new drug or some new intervention unless there's a great deal of data, and in particular, uh, uh, systematic review data. Uh, if you have good systematic review data about a relatively new intervention that's very positive and it reflects your patient, I feel comfortable adding it. Be very conservative with interventions in general. We always think doing something's the right thing to do, and there were times when doing something was hugely beneficial, like cleaning water and giving vaccines. But with many other interventions, we're really splitting hairs, and most things don't help everybody. So be conservative in how you approach things. I guess my other thought is the more we actively test and prescribe and try to address disease, uh, sometimes we undermine patients' motivation to take care of themselves better. So. A, use systematic review data when it's available. B, have a conservative approach. And C, be an agent of change for your patients. Learn to do motivational interviewing or find a good behavioralist and have people learn to take better care of themselves. Those things are much more apt to make them live longer and happier than in most any pill you can prescribe.